Hello there, whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you are, it's me, Addison, your favourite friendly furbolg who hangs around the internet talking about all things nerdy. And as you know, this August we have devoted ourselves at the Pod of Many Things to the, the Command Fest POMT, I'm calling it. I know it's not an official one, wizards can sue me I guess, but you know what, I'm just having a good time laughing about it, meeting some cool new people, and we are bringing you a whole range of content ranging around Magic the Gathering, and most importantly, Commander, the uh, singleton format where you have a legendary creature as like your boss creature and yeah i've got loads of different people to talk about that with us today um and throughout this month so let's get to it uh astral how you doing my friend doing well how you doing today i'm all right i'm okay uh time differences is obviously kicking everybody's asses but we we move we do and um yeah, Astral, if you wouldn't mind, would you uh, be so kind as to introduce yourself, tell us what you do, where people can find you on the internet, all that guesty jazz. Absolutely. So my name is Astral Flame. Uh, I am an MTG Arena and Commander content creator. I, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch and some YouTube video with some TikTok and Instagram content on the side. Uh, primarily, you can literally find me everywhere at Astral's Flame. Just don't forget the S between the L and the F. Uh, otherwise, it's not me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used to try to go by Astral Flame, but uh, unfortunately, every platform that I tried to get that name on, somebody else had it. So <laughs> yeah. it's it's the same with us. Like, well, with me, when it was there was multiple of us when we first started the podcast. But like, there's like a Twitter handle that's literally sitting on the pod of many things. So we are pod o many things. Um, and my friend just takes the piss all the time, saying like we can't afford the F and stuff. It was a joke for a long time, but yeah. Um, I so I feel your pain there, buddy. When people have a name, and it, I don't know if it's one of those ones where they've not used it either. It's like those people who sit on cool usernames. I'm like, why? Why do you do this? <laughs> like, so yeah. You know, I feel like there's tons of reasons why they do it. It's either inactivity or they just do it because like. They just want it, you know? It's it's the sake that someone else has it and no one else can have it. Yeah, some people even, like... I, I, I remember hearing that some people used to sit on, like, usernames of, like, people who were going to be famous. So, like, mm -hmm. um, like YouTubers. Uh, so, like... I, I don't think Ninja had this problem, but say Ninja, the streamer, like they had the original like Ninja Twitter handle to sell to them later on when they were like big. It was crazy. But I heard about that. But yeah, mental. So today on this episode of the Pod of Many Things uh, does MTG, the Command Fest episode, we are talking about how you win without winning the social dynamics of Commander, chosen by Astrals, a title that sounds very much like a university thesis, and I'm ready for that level of depth. However, we have to do the chaff stuff first, and we have to ask the, the questions that we're asking everybody in um in these episodes when we get to meet them to kind of get to know them uh have a little bit of a fun icebreaker so the first question i have for you astrals is which commander are you playing at the moment Ooh, uh i generally switch between it but my most played commander right now is zia Tor, the incinerator nice uh, i like to fling big things <laughs> oh well, I, you, you found a home here i am a starting green player like I am, um, my favorite card used to be just Stampede. Like I just used to be like, I'm gonna play like Stampede, and now all my creatures get like what plus four, plus four, and trample. Cool. I feel like that's game over. Cool. Um. Uh. So yeah, I'm original green player, so I understand that. Um. So yeah, you're playing. Uh. Sorry, Zinator. Did I get that right? Zeatora. Zeatora. Right. Zeatora, the incinerator, and then. Uh, so that's uh, the new Capenna Jund, like, Dragon Warlock, isn't it? The one, the Demon Dragon, the boss of the Riveteers. Yeah, I, in my arena deck, in my, they call, my friends call it my punchy lesbian deck, because it's, like, filled with professional face breakers, Jaxis, mm -hmm. and, like, all the, like, women who are, like, fighting with their bare hands. Um, Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so, uh, they, yeah, I've got Zeatora, I've got Zeatora's Envoy as well, because that card is insane. I feel like people sleep on that card so much, because they're, like, 100%. like, oh, it's so expensive. I'm, like, one, it's not. Because Blitz exists now, and two, and two, like 
I can just pull a card off the top of my library, and if it's as much damage as I did, like, I get to just play it. Like, <laughs> dear, like there's not many things. Like, I can't... Um, because I pumped it up a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I think I managed to play, like, Junji of the Sky. Yep. Like, just so I just had a, a Menace Dragon, Black Dragon on the field. I'm like, yep, we, we, we move, we do. So, yeah, that was uh, really fun. Um, our second question is... Um, what commander do you not like facing on the table? If you get into a pod and this and the person playing that commander, you're like, oh no. To be honest, I don't really have a commander I dislike. Oh, yeah. um, you're a better it, man more, than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really more like a specific card, and it's just like, even if the card is played, like I'm fine with the card being played. It's just uh, so. Like like I said, it's not a commander I hate. It's a card I I really dislike. Mygus and Lattice. What? what? Why? Um, yeah. So it's a really odd story from like twelve years ago in my university days. I'm I'm totally fine. The card being played in a pod, yeah. Like, yeah. Play it, whatever. I just have a taste for it. Like you have trauma. Ex- <laughs> this, this. Yeah. That, like there there was one person in my university that all they played was a Staxi mono white deck. With Micah Synthlatis in it. And all they would do was be like, hey, Micah Synthlatis. Sorry, it wasn't Model White. It was Boros. My bad. Because what they would do is Micah Synthlatis, everything's an artifact. Mm-hmm. They then slam down Darksteel Forge. All their artifacts are indestructible. Great. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, here's a Vandal Blast. Here's a Armageddon. Here's a anything to destroy all artifacts. And it's like, that's all their deck did. There wasn't a creature that they set to play. Like they could play their commander and swing in, but like it just the, the whole point was like, I'm just gonna blow up your stuff. And like I'm usually one, I'm fine with mass land destruction. I play with mass land destruction. What I'm not fine with is like you set out to do it on like turn four and you don't let the game play out. Like, you know, use it as a game ender, not as a I'm just gonna do this every turn so you never get to play at all. Kind of People who play land destruction are straight up psychopaths. I'm sorry. Like they I need oh, I, I need them all yeah. taking away in white coats because whoever <laughs> like decides like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna destroy lands. It's like those people who get go like when we who have cards that are like XR two permanents. Like and it just says permanence, it doesn't say non land permanence, and they choose land. I'm like, I'm like, it's like that bit in Watchmen where it's like, I, they're not locked in here with me. I'm locked in here with them. Let me out. <laughs> Let me out. Because <laughs> it just scares me. <laughs> and then uh, my last question of the three is, mm. what is your dream uh, commander to make a deck for, or your dream commander deck concept? Or because um, we've messed about with it for a few guests now I feel to be honest i've kind of built my dream deck um and that's like my zia toro one currently um i was always looking for a deck that had table interaction played dragons chucked big things did like the jundiest jund thing you could do yeah um, so the deck plays big stuff it gives it haste it has a good chunk of dragons from like afr kamigawa um zia toro itself uh like sneak attacks in the deck I run the Baldur's Gate Dragons. I have dice rolling in the deck with Vexy Puzzle Box, Delina Wild Mage, and like the Baldur's Gate Dragons. Um, I play Descend to Avernus, so I'm making the game speed up. Everyone's getting treasure and taking damage on my turn. Big things are being flung. I even have the initiative in the list, so there's a way for everyone to start binge and delving into the Undercity. Oh, and yeah. it just is. Yeah. I don't know how it all works together, but it does. Yeah, you've like, you've like, I'm like, I'm just like, is there a keyword he's missing? I'm like, I'm like trying to think. Like, you take the initiative, he becomes the monarch. Like, I like, don't have the monarch. I, oh. I tried to get the monarch on the list, but it was a little bit trickier, and unfortunately, space constraint is a thing in a card yeah. decks, surprisingly. Yeah, like so, you you do because obviously you've got to fill it with like all those lands and those like dual lands to get value. And all those artifact rocks, those mana rocks, like just yeah. I I'm, I was reading and watching actually some things about the the hundred and first cards, and I was like, oh my god! Like I didn't realize that because like reading those cards as well, they're so good. So seeing them like cut from the list was like, man, that's insane. Like there, there are cards card stronger card. than that, you know. Card to cut's always the hundred and first. The last one's always the toughest. I, I will absolutely say that. 
fair enough. I'm I'm not. I've 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 got my precon. I've opened it. I'm I'm looking at it. I'm looking at tooling it into because it's a quantum quandrix. I'm tooling mm-hmm. it into Volo to make nice. tokens for days. Like I want tokens for days. I want uh I want like I just need a titan of industry now. Like and I'm. I'm actually almost good to go because then I can just copy two of those when those come out and things get fun. Um, I have it in Historic Brawl on Arena because if you want to play Commander on Arena, you play Historic Brawl. It's not mm-hmm. quite the same, but, you know. Um, yeah, we it's it's been a lot of fun and getting into Commander and meeting you guys and everything has been a real honour and like pleasure because you guys are all so enthusiastic. So thank you very much. And segueing, mm-hmm. because ideal segues, the the social aspects that we're going to be talking about. What what do you mean by that? Then let's let's define that first. What do you mean by the social aspect of the commander format? For sure. So commander is naturally a four person game. Sometimes it will be three. The odd time when you're doing, if you want to sit in on a tournament or just battle versus one on one friends, you know, there is obviously the one v one. There's the three three person. Primarily, it does end up as a four person game or five to six in larger friend groups. But when you're dealing in that multiplayer, as the majority of the format does, that is a social dynamic game. Functionally, you're not just playing by yourself or you know just sitting at arena playing against someone else across the screen you can't talk with. You are playing with other people in a group that you're talking with, communicating with, and ideally having a good time with. Mm-hmm. And I'll say ideally because obviously there's always those pods that just kind of go like, I just need to get out of here. Yeah, those pods that implode, and we would we. I was kind of talking about that when when we talk about casual, like casual versus competitive EDH. Like one of the things that um, I do think about Commander, one of the reasons I'm really drawn to Commander when I watch content creators for Commander, like tabletop jocks and stuff, is that social chatty aspect of it. Because I've played standard and modern, um, and I've played it like drafts and tournament esque, like mini local game stores in the uk there's not many like tournaments and stuff like you go into the cities if you want to do that i don't live in a city so um yeah uh it's an in those environments it's naturally combative you are like there to win and you're gonna get salty and people aren't really gonna talk to you apart from telling you that you're dying like sort of thing whereas one of the things i really like the look of with commander is the idea of this pod of friends just together playing talking as people take their turns and some people argue that it looks a bit rude but because some people look like they tune out but like I i feel like the the idea of of being able to talk whilst playing in a more casual sense and be a bit more like friendly with people as you play is a lot nicer that's 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 a, and that seems to be the really big draw of the format and it doesn't just me it's not just the game when i've talked on twitter and stuff and talked to you guys like i say you guys because eventually i will be one of you like one of us like um it, it extends past that it extends past the game so it's a very social like like format and i and i do really enjoy that is that do you think that is one of the reasons why commander is so popular because there's that like social more social aspect than that combative, combative, competitive aspect. Hundred percent. I mean, I will say there certainly is a competitive side to Commander. I'm personally not in on the CDH side much. I have a few friends that dabble in it, and I will say even the CDH side has their level of enjoyment, friendship, and community to delve it in. Mm-hmm. Um, like their their view and aspect on the game is not so different from casual itself. Both sides very much like it. it you're here. To talk to play and enjoy mm-hmm. while decks on the commander side are obviously extremely optimized to play to win they do their thing decks on the casual side also want to do their thing they want to pop off be able to have a good time in the game they want to the, do crazy stuff and look good doing it exactly it's just the difference of how you kind of get there in the two different play styles but 100 percent like the social aspect of just talking with people interacting with people and that sort of friendship that derives from the game or the friends you get to make along the way while playing the game, <laughs> even just playing with old friends too, is just a nice touch. Cause you're talking with people, you're having a good time. You make jokes. Um, whenever I'm playing a game with friends, like I'm usually dropping like a good couple puns. Um, 
or doing something shenanigans that the table's gonna be like, well, I don't know how this is gonna work, but we'll find out. Um, like I was in Command Fest Montreal, and like this this move completely lost me the game, but it was hilarious. So I'm sitting down at the table, I'm playing with my buddy Mike uh, Carbonza, and we're sitting down, and Mike's got this big board wipe on the table, and I've got a sixty seven sixty seven Lord of Extinction, and I'm like, okay, okay. My Lord of Extinction is going to die, but I'm going to lose everything else on my board. I wonder if I can draw a way to, to get a counterspell. Because I'm playing Tybalt's Trickery in my Zia Torrid. Because, again, shenanigans. And nobody expects the red counterspell. No. no. So I sacrificed my Lord of Extinction to a greater good. I drew 67 cards. I forgot to count the number of cards in my deck. I had 53 cards. I decked myself. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I literally what? watched an Elder Dragon hijinks where where Brian Kibler did that to himself. I think it's their most recent one. Brian Kibler like had like I think it, but his was through tokens. He had like sixty odd creatures on the board. He swung and then I can't remember what card he had, but basically every time he he attacked with a creature, um, he had to draw, and then um, because of somebody's enchantment if you attack with one creature you have to t- attack with every creature that's available so that can do so so yeah he, he and it wasn't a may ability he was like oh no that's not a may ability is it like and he decked himself out he was like he had to draw 62 and i think he had 60 it was like no oh and it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking but it's it's a good story like they were all laughing and like joking and like i can imagine it was the same at your table when you were like yo i'm gonna try and (laughs) try and draw for this like yo let's go we had a good laugh about it i mean how often do you see a jun player drawing like 67 cards in his (laughs) what do you think you who do you think you are blue (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) so yeah that that that's funny and i do like that and i was talking to um donny uh, from the filthy MTG casuals about like his episode was about like casual and what does it mean to play casually versus um, versus competitively and one of the things he did say and I think this feeds into your episode as well is uh, and we kind of thought about it was the was the story of the game like is is a big thing and I think uh, whereas with that in in his episode it talks about how that feeds into the casual environment because you're kind of like joint storytelling the game together not in like a D sense but like a uh this ha- this is happening this happened oh this was funny because i think having that connection to people in terms of the social aspect is also like really strong and powerful do you do you agree with that that like the, the story of the game is something that really brings like pods together especially pods that play regularly Oh, 100 percent because at that point like an ideal commander game in whether all even in c or competitive like either whether in competitive or casual an ideal game is a game when you get to have fun the definition of that fun may be different depending on the pod you're playing and who you're with or what you're trying to go for but if at an end of the day everyone can say hey i got to do my thing try my thing attempt to do my thing in the sense of you know you went to combo off but it was stopped but at least you got to experience what your deck did and at least attempt to try. No one likes the game where it's like, I play a land and then I don't draw anything and I can't do anything for the commander game, right? That's that's not fun. That's not exciting. That's not interesting for any player. What's interesting is when you can engage in the table, you can interact with the table, you can make jokes with the table. Like, you know, the one player who's maybe playing a storm deck pops off and nukes everyone for 30 damage. They're suddenly the threat. They become the arch enemy and the table bands together to take them off. Um, you know, maybe there's the group hug player who's suddenly given everyone all these tools and you're suspicious about why they're doing all this, what's really going on. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, totally. I, uh, I do think that, um, I was going to talk about like table politics, but I think we'll, 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 we'll still table that for a second because i want to i do want to talk about like that thing of like the arch enemy and the group hug player because i didn't realize like i know arch enemy from the jewels of the plane walkers mm-hmm. video game where basically you all band together to defeat the nico bolus that has like millions of cards and rah, 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 um online and that was fun that's basically how i got into magic in the first place so i was like 15 16 playing far too much online games and not doing my homework 
And like mm-hmm. we just, I think Magic the Gathering, Jewel of the Planeswalkers was like free or something at one one yeah, day. Yeah, I think so. And we were like, oh yeah, we'll play that. And then we we genuinely got like hooked. We like went to F and M and stuff like that. So yeah, we um, so let's talk about the Arch Enemy first. So the Arch Enemy is a, a term that comes from the format where all the players are banding together to defeat a a single player. But in Commander. That's basically where you fret assess <laughs> and you go, this person, and you start doing those politics to band the table together and get them to try and eliminate that player or kowtow that player as much as possible. Because sometimes eliminating them is also not the best move for everybody. They're like, they are the arch enemy, but reducing them to zero hit points makes us that Spider Man meme again. And we're all pointing at each other. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah. Um, what do you do you like that role in in the game like being the arch enemy or are you one of those people who's like yo are you the person who's always trying to make someone the arch enemy um i'm usually it's 50 50 for me Mm -hmm. uh just because of the decks that i play um a lot of my decks have very much like they they are explosive right out of the gate it's a slight or slow Mm buildup. um there's interaction cards i'll play i don't really present myself as a threat but like you know, in the case of my Zia Tora deck, suddenly when I play Zia Tora and I sneak attack in like a Malignus, suddenly I look like the Arch Enemy. Yeah. Because somebody's taking 20 plus 20, and that's a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the type of deck that I play determines if that's going to be the case or the other decks in the pod. Um, like, uh, when I when I play Commander Online or I host up my weekly Commander games on Tuesdays and Thursdays for Taco Commander, I, I don't discourage anyone playing whatever deck. If someone wants to bring a C deck into the pod, like, bring it. Um, I'll do a rule zero discussion. Just I ask, like, you know, give a deck list, give, like, two sentence description about what the deck does, and state the kind of game you're going for. Mm-hmm. If someone is bringing a pre-con to that and someone else is bringing an upper-level, highly optimized deck, that's fine, that's good. What it probably means is the highly optimized deck is going to play the role of the arch enemy in that game, and they're going to do their thing while the rest of us are really trying to formulate the plan to stop them or prevent them or take them down a notch to bring it to a more intriguing level of play where it's not suddenly turn four and half the table's dead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I quite like the concept of arch enemy um, because of the fact that I like um, I like the idea that you just kind of like pop off like and you you're now facing off against free people i don't know mm-hmm. why i this is this is where my like tendencies come in and i'm like i like them odds let's go like and i know i'm I'm in trouble like back against the wall like oh my god because you're playing blue you're playing red and i don't even know what you're doing over there but i know i'm going to try and do anything you're going to counter me you're just going to do damn it you're just going to poke at me for like and then you're going to do whatever you're doing over there and then you find out they're playing like uh black white suppression so you're just there like i can't do anything <laughs> like you either kill everything or for some reason you've got like borrowed time portable hole suppression chains like stop go away <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> so yeah um i really i i do like that idea and the the table hugger is some uh, i i've only just uh, I think I, uh, again, I think it was through that EDH hijinks, the El Dragon hijinks episode with Brian Kibler where he decked himself out. Because uh, a table hugger is someone who plays a lot of spells that involve the collective. So it's usually like all players can do this, or players vote, or yada, yada, yada. And you think that's not beneficial to them like at any point you're like why why are you giving me like so for example a good one is curse of opulence for example Mm -hmm. like curse of opulence you play that you select a player and then when you attack that player or somebody else attacks that player they get a treasure token and um i think it has to do damage though if i'm correct um but again, I'm I'm new to this like commander, so these cards I haven't always seen. I haven't seen a lot of these cards. So um, yeah, so curse of opulence, and you'd think like, oh, that's nice of them. They've given me treasure tokens. But then you read it, and you're like, oh no. But when you attack them and you get a treasure token, they do too. So mm-hmm. like, 
you've been sat there like attacking them thinking this is great this is get attacking the person who's cursed like yes this is great this is what i need rah, rah, rah. and then you realize oh no i've just given them a boat ton of mana what Ulamog, where did you come from go away <laughs> like, like, like so uh yeah um i i do love like um table huggers they're like they're, they're they're dope as well i find them uh really interesting um what's your view on like the table hugger archetype of player i completely love it to be honest especially like there are so many different types of group hug decks out there that the play style of each one when it comes to a pot is entirely different um i have one friend who plays a feldegriff group hug deck so they'll they'll put in enchantments that help you draw help you get mana Usually, they'll flash it in on someone else's turn just before they start there, so you know they get the first bonus of it. But it progresses the game forward and makes it a very explosive environment where crazy things can happen. Mm. That being said, like obviously, you know you always have to tutor the line or teeter on the line. Like, when's the right time to deal with the group hug player? Is there a problem with these enchants? And it makes the game interesting because it's a whole other level of thinking outside of the normal. You've got these tools and resources. So how do you use these tools and resources to your advantage before it becomes too much and the group hug player is going to, you know, just steamroll the game away with whatever secret win condition they have. So it, it makes the game interesting, I find, especially when the table's like, okay, we all love these things. And then, you know, someone's really taking advantage of those tools. Maybe they've played like 10 spells in a turn, got on a creature board of like 15 creatures out, tokens and everything, you know, one person popped off because the group hug player played their cards. Now you've got a group hug player and someone presenting themselves as the arch enemy. Who's the real threat in that situation? Yeah, and this is where my favourite thing about Commander, and I think one of the things we're going to talk about quite heavily because of that social aspect and that conversation mm -hmm. aspect, the politics of a pod could put most governments to shame. <laughs> like, 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 the fact that they can get everyone to agree on something when they are all trying to take each other out like the level of negotiation like i'm there like why are we not sending these people in and like bank robberies and hostage situations and stuff just go to your local car shop and get the commander players out they all sort your your shit out so yeah let's talk about that what do you think about like the politics of the uh the pod what about pod politics a game is no good if it doesn't have any politics. <laughs> there has to be something. Like, okay, I'll, I'll say it. politics obviously does not always show up in a one-on-one -on -one situation or in a competitive type of environment. In mm. those situations, very different dynamic. There, there's less politics on a highly optimized end when the sole goal is just to complete the end of the game and take your win in, mm -hmm. in a um, tournament-style scene. And that's happened very but. When, when we focus on just the group of four playing into testings and try it, nothing makes a good commander game except politics. Um, you know, you could be the worst. You could be playing against the stacksiest deck in the world. And if there's politics in it, you're going to have a better blast because the everyone's going to be like, all right, we don't like these stacks. How are we going to band together? How are we going to deal with these stacks to take it down? You know, maybe you're running into someone who's playing like the Beamtown Bullies. Um, they're, they're doing the whole hey, I'm going to give you this free creature, but it's not going to work out so great for you. And you're like, how do we deal with that? How do we stop that from coming in? Maybe someone's playing Corona, the false god, and their entire deck is enchantments. And, you know, they've gone and suited up your creature um, with a bunch of enchants. It's goaded. It has to attack every turn. It can't attack the Corona player. So how do you deal with that and make it so you can actually discuss with players? And you start getting into the interesting aspects. Like, I'll use the Corona example. So, uh, the uh, the person who's playing Chrono has put like a vow of flight on your creature. Your creature is flying. This is great. It's got plus two, plus two. It can only attack someone that isn't the Chrono player. Now you've got to think. All right, I want to get in for this because this is you know spreading some damage around the table. You start talking. You start negotiating. Hey, can I swing at you? Get this damage in. I'll get a small benefit. We'll do a trade. It, it gets even better when like the monarch is in i've seen some really interesting monarch trades and some of them are diplomatic and some of them are very um forceful yeah i'll be like uh someone will be like i'll attack you with this three three if i can steal the monarch and you know the other player will be like well i kind of like it because i need the card drop well and if you don't so it'll retort back to the other player well if you don't let me uh take it with a three three uh my ten tens coming in with trample <laughs> and i will take it <laughs> it's it's sometimes it's an abdication sometimes it's a coup <laughs> like, like, um 
I, and I do like that about politics as well. One of the one of the funniest things like I've seen in is just like because it's even the politics where somebody who should be the arch enemy somehow manages to convince everybody, but that they're, they're not. Like mm-hmm. they're like they're like oh yeah 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 yeah. If you get rid of him, because like, like again like your your Corona example, um, like you you have that creature, and like the Beamtown bully is just gonna keep sending like creatures your way, like so. You're like they're like, and actually, when you think about it, that, Corona player is is probably the arch enemy. But they're gonna go, oh well, but you know, I can't, I'm forced to do it. It's such a shame. Mm-hmm. What you had to put the thing, <laughs> the put the thing on that has like, um, uh, you had to put all your enchantments on this thing. You had to vulture on this thing up to be like massive. Why did you just leave it as it was? Oh well, you know, like there's it's I I love that bit of politics as well, like the deception. Like I've never seen friends apart from when Among Us was really popular in the, in yep. the in the pandemic. I've never seen friends like lie to each other so much as as they do in a uh, in a commander pod. So like, yeah, it's not a big deal. Like, dude, like I know. I know from like standard and modern and stuff. As soon as a scoot swarm hits the deck, you get rid of that thing. Like it does not stay on the board. And I've seen, <laughs> I've genuinely seen my foes just sit there going, "Well, it's not that big a deal. Like I'm just gonna turn them into mana dorks." And everybody's like, "Oh yeah, that sounds fair." And you're like, "What? No! <laughs> like stop! What are you doing? <laughs> like, like." I don't know if you understand what's happening here, because like as well, the work. The funny thing was that it was a Ginny Fay deck that I saw somebody oh. do it with. So it's like mm-hmm. they're just like scoot swarming all over the place, and then you're like, and then it was everybody's just suddenly like, where did all these cats come from? Like like, oh, I wonder where. Um, because my uh, kind of going back a little bit, my commander that I hate seeing, um, even though I've not played a lot, is um, is Krenko. Like Krenko, mob boss, the yeah. mob boss, because Krenko like has the the most insane curve I've ever seen. The bar chart of Krenko is like, or the line graph of Krenko is like, oh, it's all right. And then suddenly you look and you you literally just turn away for a second to look at like say your graveyard, and you look back up at the table and you're f- facing down thirty goblins, and you're like, where did you all come from? I don't even understand. It's not been that many turns, <laughs> like. So it's just like it's that thing of like doubling exponentially that I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh my god, it's I don't understand. So yeah, um, I I I love the politics of the game, and I think that that social aspect of like conversation and like group strategy and group think is like so powerful to make the format successful. Well, even on top of that, it functionally can change how decks work as well. Um, so one of my games I like to discuss when talking about like how to win even when you lose type of situation, like I did not win this game. Um, I was playing the Beamtown Bullies and I was in a pod with a Okun coin flip deck with its partner. There was a Tox Rail and a Mono Blue Commander. Um, this was in a pod with Adam the Gathering. Adam's playing Tox Rail. And, you know, we're all doing our rules of discussion. We're all being like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's try it out. Like, we don't mind playing against Tox Roll. Like, yes, Commander is powerful, but it makes for an interesting game because you have to learn how to deal with the Tox Roll while managing the other players. <laughs> um, and, like, I'm playing the Beantown Bullies. And, like, I have my deck style to give people helpful things like Titan of Industries or Avengers of Zendikar. Uh, and then when, if they get too far ahead, then I will give them the leveler. Uh, as I, as I coined the deck, it's called, uh, I'll believe in you up until the point you're about to win, and then I'll level the playing field. Um, and it's very fun. It, uh, everyone's like, oh, you're so nice. Thanks for this, Titan. Thanks for this. And then when they're about to do their game-winning move, it'll be like, upkeep, here's a leveler. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Peace, I'm out. But- like Jack sparring your way out of there. Like, remember, this is the day. Yeah, that's so fun. And in this game, uh, it was super weird because, like, Usually, when I like one of my win cons to take someone out of the game is like give someone a world gorgeous dragon, you know, exile their entire board, I'll take back control of it and then kill it, and then they don't get their stuff back. Um, or the leveler in this case, uh, the world gorgeous dragon was in my bin. Um, I actually gave people a world gorgeous dragon, uh, and then let it die, and then all their stuff came back because when world gorgeous dragon poofs away the board. 
It wipes away the slime counters on the creature that Tosro puts on. Uh, what? <laughs> so it resets their board state back to when they could actually keep their creatures large. So I would run a couple untapped strategies and ways to keep the World Gorger Dragon going back into the bin. So I'll be like, your turn, here's a World Gorger Dragon, all your slime tokens are gone. Uh, I'll bury the World Gorger Dragon, get your stuff back at the end of the turn, and I'll keep it back in my graveyard. Rinse and repeat on each of my friend's turns as the Toxtrel was the arch enemy. And then, you know, when it came around to the uh, near the end game, I had to give the Toxtrel player the World Gorger Dragon so they could stop playing spells in the turn. But it's like, you know, usually I would go to win with the World Gorger Dragon. Instead, I was actively saving the table with I'm, the dragon. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how how you've managed to create flicker with world gorgeous dragon like i'm like what you've, you've literally just made a flicker deck with world gorgeous dragon what <laughs> like uh so there's, there's, there's some a couple... nice counters you got there shame if they all just disappeared <laughs> more or less yeah it's uh like so the deck itself operates on using a few older cards like Despoetic poetic scepter uh tell jalad style it's just these random permanents that say Target permanent you own. Doesn't matter if you control it, it's if you own it, you bury it. Doesn't matter who controls it, it's just you you bury it, it goes into the graveyard. Or like, Stylus is like, put target permanent you own on the bottom of your deck. Usually these would be terrible. But in this but in, situation with bullies, it's like, okay, in a, in rinse a, and repeat. Yeah, in a, in a deck that uses uses your own monsters against you, mm. yeah, that, that's perfect. Cause like, exactly. Like, that Riveters Rampage deck is one that I've actually been, like, looking at because of, like, Beamtown Bullies and the... Because that's, like, the, the second commander, isn't it? Because it's got the... Mm-hmm. The other dude who makes everything who makes everything have blitz, but yep. then however many times he's been cast, you reduce the blitz cost by that much. I'm like, mm. that's insanely good. That's insanely good. It's super fun. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at that. I'm looking at exit from exile and Verondis because I'm like, I, I need because I'm making Tofala, um, mm-hmm. a werewolf deck. I need gruel stuff. And, like, Rondis has the better Gruul stuff, like, land base and, like, artifacts and stuff. But, like, Exit from Exile has Jessica's Will and some other, like, really fun cards. And I'm like, oh, oh, you look nice. (laughs) So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and, like, I quite like, um, I just quite like the the idea of, I like the Riveteers in New Capenna anyway. They're they're my family that I play. Because, like I said, I play the Zeatora play like Jaxis, like all the Riveteers uh cards. Uh Mr is it Mr. Orifuru? Or Orifio? The oh, right Orifio, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Older. Orifio. Yeah, the the guy who you just like go, right, he's on the board. Oh by the way, everyone's got doubles. Like, <laughs> like enjoy. Oh, what's that? I've got him with Shroud. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> You're having such a horrible time. Like, because one of my friends actually said that he's going to build a commander deck around Orifu because he's just like, yes. okay, the Orfeo, because he's just like, yeah, like, imagine he's not even that expensive. Like, he's like four, I think, CMC. Four mana. Like, four just CMC. Four like, average commander cost is around five, six, like, average. Like, so he's like, yeah, you get him out quite early. And if you can, like, Swift Boots him, or it's not Swift Boots, is it? Yeah, it is. Swift Boots and Lightning Greaves, yep. So Swift Boots and Lightning Greaves him. Like, he's now, like, you could, they can't do anything to him unless you have to sacrifice him. Like, it's all good. Like, um, So, yeah, no, I, I really like that idea. But, yeah, um, pol- politics and, like, the idea of, like, watching players be able to, like... M- in, and I like that idea as well that this the social aspect not only gives you a good story but it can sometimes give you new strategies because you have to think of things that will benefit the people around you to an extent that makes it worth it for them otherwise you're kind of there like ah oh, I've got nothing to give you've got to have something to give I find like otherwise no one's going to want a politics with you or, or talk to you about like how you're gonna uh, come second or whatnot I guess. Hundred percent. Like uh, commander is like a game of like a puzzle, right? Like you are four people at a table actively trying to meter your way to the end of this maze, this puzzle, solve it, and interact with it. And everyone's pieces are all different. You've got to find out how they all fit together. Hmm. So, um, 
yeah, when 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 you go through that, it's really positive. But um, obviously, sometimes the the social aspect doesn't work. Like um, sometimes you you go in a pod and like you said, eject, eject, eject. Like I want out. Like, mate, I'll scoop if this carries on. Um, what what do you think leads to that uh, that problem that that when communication breaks down and stuff? What's the what, what do you think can lead to that? So there's usually a couple of things that kind of lead to that. It's either prior discussion is not much. Um, 90% of the time, I'll use that as a very rough statistic just based on personal experience. So don't quote it as actual, but... No, we're just talking um, about experiences, don't worry. Yeah. Just from personal experience, about 90% of my games if have been good because there has been good discussion. The only time for the 10% that it's been bad has when the discussion either hasn't occurred or it was very minor. Um, and sometimes, you know, this doesn't always happen because some people just don't talk or they're not 100% upfront. Um, it's usually why I like, I'll take the, if I'm sitting in a pod with people, I don't know, I'll take the initiative and I'll be like, Hey, this is what my deck deck does. And just try to open up the doors. Like if you sit down at a table and people are just like, yeah, I'm playing Kenrith. Um, I'm playing, uh, Cranko. I'm playing Grand Augustine the fourth or Grand Arbiter Augustine the fourth, right? Cool. That's that's great. I I know your commander. I don't know what your deck does. I I don't know you. What what are you looking for? What <laughs> what is what what is our goal here? Right. Um, the lack of communication towards any type of thing will deteriorate the gameplay overall. Uh, at the end, it's a social game. You at least want to know kind of what's maybe going on, so you have an idea of how you can interact and make some a good time. The memories. Mm. I, I I see that I quite uh, I come from like a TTRPG background like I I, I play TTRPGs like uh, play Blades in the Dark and like the rule zero conversation in in those those environments is really important and I didn't actually realize that Commander had the rule zero conversation until obviously I started go looking into it and um, consuming more content of of a Commander variety so what how important do you think rule zero conversations are and what does a rule zero conversation need to include like every time nine times out of ten your rule zero conversation needs to go over these things to make it successful yeah so like important wise i'd say it's a nine out of ten and i'll use that as a as a basis like you should always have a rule zero talk does mm -hmm. the rule zero talk always need to be in depth every time no because circumstances Maybe you're playing with the same group of friends you've played with for years. You already know what, what everyone does, you know? Um, you're, you know, you're playing with a, a bunch of friends and you've all agreed to go into it blind. You've organized the pod and they're all decks you use and you're wanting everyone to test these decks out for you, right? A, a few different ex exponential... You know, I forget the word I'm going for, but outside of the box situations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exceptional. Like, Exceptional. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just things that... Don't, the, the kind of one out of ten that doesn't really encompass the reason for the rule zero. Um, but the other nine out of ten, very important to have. It formulates the game. And for me personally, what I would say, and I'll, I'd encourage whenever I talk to players, is your talk should be, doesn't have to be very long. It just summarize what you're looking for. Say who your commander is, literally two to three sentences. What does your deck do? And then one sentence, what are you looking for in the game? Uh, like, for me, I would describe Zeatora. Uh, my commander is Zeatora the Incinerator. The deck is all about flinging at big creatures while assisting the table with the initiative, having some dice roll and fun, and using Descend to Invernus to group slug the table down and give everyone treasures. I'm looking to make this game all about a bit of speed for some fast gameplay with big stuff and impactful. Fair enough. And that, that's, like, yeah, that's a really good, like, brief summary. And, like... I feel like that conversation also allows you to learn about people because I know this sounds like anime esque and like it sounds like a Yu Gi Oh line or something, but like I feel like the decks people play reflect who they are. So, like, I usually play Gruel, like, I play big stompy werewolf boys in every if, if I could play them every standard format, I would like werewolves are my favorite thing in fiction and like they they're like the first real like gimmick that i ever went like oh, f f being able to flip and transform cards is like the coolest thing to me so like um 
that tells you that I like to swing and so I'm I'm going to be an aggressive player and like maybe like maybe talk some shit and get and find out like I might I might mess about and find out that somebody's got hands for me like uh I might run my mouth a bit but like I'm out to have a good time I'm not like I'm not like galaxy brained like playing um joda or anything like that i'm just there like yo i'm going to swing at you and if you block you block and that's a shame um whereas like somebody who plays like i don't know i'm trying to think of a commander that's like really tricky you get the idea that they're like really tricksy brina i find Mm -hmm. that the silver quill one is like like, when i see somebody throw that down i'm like you're either like really intelligent like and like being really sneaky here or you really like birds and i'm not i'm pretty sure it's the other one like i'm pretty sure it's the former like i hope it is like, because otherwise none of us know what brina does because your your thing reads like a bloody shakespeare play and i teach english like, like so yeah i uh brina players like and then other things as well like p- players who like a lot of interaction like the, and like people who like to leave mana up like my my deck is about leaving mana up during your turn doing things during your turn they're a bit greedy and i like them like they're, they're you let you learn things about people via the decks they play so those little snippets also give you things like conversation starters and stuff like that like oh so like why why um why uh to send it into avernus what what what's really like because you've even named a card so you can be like that seems like a weird card to put in there like why would you do that rah, rah. like uh why the initiative surely you don't want me getting bonuses and then like it also gives you like like almost like conversation trees you can go down like if that makes sense no 100 percent, it does like at the end of the day commander social right and it's one of the takeaways because i i've known a few people who delve into commander for simply the social aspect because it'll help them with social skills Mm -hmm. like actively having to talk to someone is going to help you in learning more about people interactions with people and especially in a problem solving environment Mm -hmm. it's a great way even for personal development um i'll 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 sidestep it in because hopefully it's not too much of a (laughs) out there idea but like you are at a table with people to sit down play a game and have a good time there's going to be problems that arise that you have to solve And you can't always solve it alone. And there are times when you need to talk with the table to solve those. And it does encourage problem solving, communication, and cooperation to make deals with people to accomplish the end goal at the end of the day. Which is another way of kind of how to win, even when you lose kind of situation. You know, make friends, bottom line. (laughs) Yeah, the real victory was the friends we made along the way. You tried to avoid it earlier. I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. We keep <laughs> dancing around it. But, like, yeah, the the real victory is the mates you make along the way. Like, you have a good time. You meet people. You um, you pod in and out. Like, and I will say that that's one of the things about the community and, and social media that I've really enjoyed is the fact that everybody's just, like, totally, like, accepting and, like, really nice. Because you, you do, like... Coming at it from two different aspects. So as a as a very casual, standard, and modern player, your job... I was saying this to uh, to Donnie. Your job as a modern player is to moan. Like, is to be, like, really negative about cards. Like, and your job in standard is to moan because your cards are going to get phased out in the next rotation. And that's sad because you've spent a lot of money... And now your cards are useless. Um, so you, you've got to moan about that. In TTRPGs, there's there's different fights that happen, like almost like mm-hmm. clockwork. Like, um, like some of them are political, some of them are stupid, some of them are just petty, and you're just kind of there. Like sometimes you look at TTRPG Twitter and you're like, uh, it's um, it's if you have watched Community. The, the show community yeah, yeah. you know when troy and abed come back and there's like the apartments on fire they've got like the pizza yep. and the, the like i genuinely walk into ttrpg twitter sometimes and i like i'm like that i'm like what, 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 what happened whilst i was asleep like <laughs> oh this person said this about like rogues like oh somebody said that monks were useless i'm like like monks are my favorite class and even i know like until later levels they're like not that good like i was like <laughs> 
Like it's kind of you're kind of playing on like one point five difficulty, like, and that's one of the reasons why I like them. Um, so yeah, like uh, I find I, f- I find that coming into the EDH community and that positivity, and I think the word I used to describe it with lunch was enthusiasm. Like mm-hmm. everyone seems enthusiastic; they're not jaded much. Like I've seen a couple of people that are like. Dude, if I see another Rara, I'm, I'm done. Mm-hmm. But like, they're they're enthusiastic. Do you think that's something that helps the social uh, environment as well? Like having these people on online, having these, like in, having that general thing of like as a community of being enthusiastic for what you do. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Like, if I was sitting down in a game with like three people who just seemed like it was miserable, they didn't really want to play. Like, I probably would not play at that pod. Mm-hmm. And I'd be honest, like I would just be like, I'm looking for a game where I can like have a good upbeat time. It just the the vibe, the energy we're having just isn't isn't there. And, isn't for me, you know. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with saying like, hey, I don't think I can play in this pod. It's just not feeling for me. Like it is okay to say no. It is another way to to win, even when you lose, because sometimes you just need to accept like, you know, pods sometimes just won't out you're not always going to agree with the pod and it's just better to excuse yourself out of a pod and go find somewhere where you are going to have a good time and i do think when the positivity comes into a pod and everyone's extremely enthusiastic you were in for an amazing time because everyone's going to be like all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed about what they're playing what they're doing especially if everyone's like you know jamming a new card has a new deck is trying something different now right like it brings that that energy up to a whole new level you could be playing like uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Halvar. You're you're playing mono white artifacts with Halvar, and you've just finally gotten in a Caldra complete because it was seven dollars, and you made some money because of commissions. I don't know, but you just got this Caldra complete, and you want to try it out in the tech. And you know, it's a seven mana card. It's a big bomb. It does a lot of things. And you're like, got this out, got it on Halvar, double strike. Let's go. And you're excited. You're pumped up, and everyone was else shares that enthusiasm because you're like all right we got to see you do this we got to have you do this and you know then they decide to blow up halvar so you don't get the swing and kill someone you know yeah but the yeah. point is the enthusiasm and energy is there and they if everyone in the pod brings that it, it takes it to a whole other level they see you do your thing and they're like oh that was cute <laughs> like, like um, yep um because probably the last thing before we do like some some quick fire stuff um at the end because these episodes are a bit shorter because there's so many of them are like I don't want to like take too much of your time. Um, is um, is one of the things I also noticed about Commander, and uh, I kind of got told off because apparently it's still a bit of bad etiquette. But like, I'd seen a lot of other people do it, and maybe it was because of the fact that I was um, I was new. Um, but also as well, people like reach over and look at cards that they think are cool, and then get like jazzed up about those cards. Obviously, you ask and stuff like that. Um, but um, again, in the competitive sense, in like my modern days and in my standard days, leave my board alone. If you are, if you need me to tell you something, I will tell you, right? Like because obviously I need it where it is. Like things are gonna happen in a minute because I'm obviously optimized to like do crazy stuff all the time. Um, whereas in Commander, one of the things I really like is like when people like pick up a card, they're like, "Oh my god, I've never seen that before." They're like, "Oh my god, I've never known that you could use it like this before." Like, and they pick it up and they start reading it and they start going, "That's so clever! You did something like that's so cool! Like that's mm-hmm. such a such a an awesome thing to see, to have happen, to like ex- to do, like to like pay somebody that like respect and go like." I oh, know your deck's fucking cool. Like, like let me see that. Like, obviously you gotta be nice. Don't bend their cards or anything. But like, yeah, you know that's that's it's just so cool. So like, see everyone, uh, a bit more like open and relaxed and casual because and social because of the fact that like yeah I come from a competitive section of MTG and I went to. TTRPGs and TTRPGs are all that like it's about like grabbing your friend's character sheet and telling them well why don't you try this like try this do anything (laughs) or like um going oh what how can you do that oh it's because you have this like oh that's dope like so having that like crossover with my TTRPG background and like having those things that I recognize is so good in commander 
Oh, 100%. Like, I, like I'm like you. I do a lot of standard. I do modern, a uh, bit of Pioneer and Legacy. And that scene is very different. You know, your board state is set. If you want to read something on your opponent's side, you know, either they will read it or you'll ask permission. The commander is very different because everyone's so close and so social, right? It's a very lax, relaxing... I don't want to say lax. Lax isn't really the right word, but relaxing environment for people just to jam a game. You know, you play something really sweet. Maybe someone's never seen it. Um, they want to pick it up. They want to read it because they've they've thought about something they can do for it. Like I, I see that with a card called Tortured Existence, and I know the name doesn't give it any credence, but it's a really cool card that some people don't know about. You can pay a black, discard a card from your hand, and you can return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and it's like two bucks. It's this really off the wall enchantment that no one really sees, but when it's played, it's really sweet because now you have a way to. You know, instead of like the hundred and fifty dollar full Rast stronghold for two bucks, you you can recycle cards in your bin and put them back to your hand for more. Suddenly, Dock Side's back. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Not that that needs to be played twice in a game, but like you know, maybe you're playing like a what elves. You know, you're double fetching. You're you're replaying uh, Mr. Orpheo um, because it died and you want it back to double up the creatures. You know, it's yeah. cool card tech like that. And I, I I will speak to experience on you know boring cards. There are some players who. Do not like people touching their cards at the commander game, which is totally fair, and it's always good to ask. Um, I played a, a, I used to have a Prosper deck that has since transformed and become Hidetsuga Devouring Chaos. But what the deck would do is I would be able to steal cards from my opponent's top of their deck. I'd be able to play it because, like, Atali was there. Yeah. I, I got to play a Mana Crypt from one of my opponent's decks. And, you know, I, I asked them, like, hey, can I have the card? I brought it to my side of the field. Um when I was tapping it and stuff, I was slightly doing a little flick with it, because i that's what I do with my own cards. Like, I'll, I'll flick it down a little bit. Nothing to damage, but you can you can slightly hear it. And the player expressed, like, hey, do you mind not doing that? And I said, yeah, hey, you know what? I get it. It's your card. So what I did was, just out of respect, because it was their first mana crypt, it's the card. I'm like, here, you know what? Just to make sure I don't cause damage to it, why don't I just let you have this? We'll set it off to the side, and I'll just make a token. Mm. No harm, no foul. Yeah. And, like, yes, the card was fine at the end. Like, actively like don't damage other people's cards obviously no, totally but like if someone has a concern about you handling the cards like speak up like i had no issue with them mentioning that like if i am handling your card and you are worried something's going to happen to it like i i would never but i respect because it's someone else's property it's their card their their enjoyment speak up and say it yeah i'll pass it back and work out something else for it but like it it happens and even that's a social aspect like to pay attention to, right because there are cards where you take someone else's permanent and you do at the end of the day need to be respectful of their stuff. Yeah, totally. I, I, I totally get that. And like, that's part of the social aspect is like setting your boundaries and like being able to speak that up, like and talk and do what you need to do to not just uh, like protect your, protect your, your property, but also protect your mm -hmm. time. Like you're having, you're having a, you're here for a time, a good time. Time is valuable, man. Like, we don't get a lot of it. We don't get a lot of free time. So when it is happening, like, and we are getting to play, like, of course we're going to be pissed if it's not what we want it to be. And, like, right. as long as it's not, like, you're just throwing a fit because you're you're losing or somebody's interacting. Like, I know for a fact that when I make my Volo deck, like, I'm going to get Volo out, like, twice, and then eventually I am going to have to like resort to like shapeshifters and mm -hmm. be like, because he does, he, the, the, the dude is, he's got a great beard, but he's also got a massive forehead that the red dot site just appears on straight away. Mm -hmm. And like, I it could happens. even, yeah, yeah, I could either like get really mad about that and be like, really like, mm -hmm. or I could just be like, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> like, like, I, I, I got to play him a couple of times. Yeah, I got my, let's say, I, I managed to get like my frost links off. So I've tapped two cards till they're there till my next turn. Pretty much, dope, cool. Like, it's it's just one of them things where I'm just like, um, you you have to protect your time and you have to talk about it. But like, there's also that thing of like people are gonna also be able to call you out and say like yo you're kind of just like moaning because you're not winning like and you need to like sort that out like because it's important like people's time is important you got to respect it you got to respect their stuff 
like especially if it's like a pod that you don't play with very often and they've welcomed you in so it's like free friends and they've seen that you you've got your mat and everything like be respectful they let you play like you don't have to like take their shit but you do have to like realize that they didn't have to do that they could have just played free player you know so i i I'm a big proponent of like the social aspect, and I think you're right. It's it's like really important to set that up as soon as possible with rule zero and stuff like that. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. So, so, Astrals, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. I've really enjoyed speaking to you about the social aspects and how we win without winning in Commander because of that social dynamic. So, Astrals, for the people at home listening watching etc etc can you do the thing again where you tell us who you are what you do and where we can find you on the internet absolutely and thanks again for having me it was a really great time no it's you great. can find me okay. anytime let me know if we're if you ever want to do anything else like please hit me up um, will do awesome like i said my name is astro flame uh, i stream mtg arena and commander you can find me on twitch twitter tiktok instagram and youtube at astro flame on all platforms I'm usually doing something or something with MTG, so come and hang out. I'm always looking to talk. Even hit me up on Twitter. Shoot me a deck idea. If it's about Jund and Dragons, um, that's the brand. People love it. <laughs> hit me up for it. I, I love talking Jund and Dragons. Jungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and as usual, I'm, I've am i been out to send your favorite friendly furball who hangs around the internet. And yeah, a massive shout out to the EDH community, the commander for the community for taking me under their wing at this moment in time letting me like talk to them about stuff people like astral people like um donny uh bird lunchbox all these people who have been so kind to give me like an hour an hour and a half of their time to like walk me through this which has been great and so with that whoever you are wherever you are whenever you are i hope you're safe I hope you're well, and I hope that you're enjoying whatever it is you do, whether it's reading comics, manga, drawing, playing Yu-Gi-Oh, like looking at your Funko Pop vinyl collection, whatever you're doing, I hope it brings you joy, I hope you're smiling, and I hope you're doing it with friends, okay? Look after yourselves. Peace. No, the record button. I'll have to cut that bit out.